Oh yes, 2024 comes with good things from Faraja Settlers Limited. And of course, I've been telling you more about the ranch Gilgil Gardens in uh, Gilgil. And we have been selling phase 8 and I can assure you that it's completely sold out. And of course, I'm bringing you the ranch Gilgil Gardens phase 9 in Gilgil. Now, from Gilgil town to this place, it is just 15 minutes drive. And of course, you enjoy social amenities. And uh, we have social amenities like Nagum Primary School. This place is known as Nagum. And of course, we have Nagum Primary School. Just few meters from this land. And of course, we have hospital like Samaritan Hospital nearby. We have, uh, of course, police station like the one in Gilgil. We have electricity nearby. Actually, our neighbor has electricity. We have people who are doing farming. If you are there and maybe you would want to have a land that is very, very fertile. Remember, this is a virgin land. It is a land that has not been uh, used before so it is a virgin land meaning it is a fertile land and of course if you'd want to do farming there are people who are doing farming here we have people who are planting beans we have uh, maize we have even avocados so this is a very very fertile land apart from that we have people who are doing even beekeeping that is uh, something that uh, you know uh, people should really consider when you are buying a plot and uh, the ranch Gilgil gardens the social amenities that you are enjoying here i can assure you this is a uh, a deal that you do not want to lose now we also have people who are building houses like we have our neighbor here who is building a house and of course we have so many neighbors remember this place is just 15 minutes from Gilgil town meaning people are coming in and building and of course where there is you know social amenities like schools and hospitals and even churches you can be sure and certain that it is a place that you can invest in so what are you waiting for a 50 by 100 piece of plot is going for 280,000 Kenya shillings and of course if you are buying this plot courtesy of Kamuhunja show if you watch Kamuhunja show I have a deal for you because you just need a deposit of 10,000 Kenya shillings you just call the number on your screen 0705525252 and say of course that you have watched Kamuhunja show and you will be able to uh, deposit 10,000 Kenya shillings and clear the balance in a very flexible payment plan. I always tell you that Faraja Settlers Limited have very very flexible payment plan. We have an year payment plan. We have a six months payment plan. So you choose between the two and of course we ensure that you get your title deed in a duration of one month upon completing your amount that is 280,000 Kenya shillings and of course remember our title deeds are genuine so before even buying this plot you can request for the papers so that you can do a search so that you can be certain that you are buying a genuine land that is what we as Faraja Settlers Limited do here so that our clients can be able to trust this company don't buy without doing a search because we want to uh, be trustworthy to you our clients so guys you can call that number on your screen 0705525252 or you can visit our offices in nairobi cbd so that you can be able to book a site visit and remember this site visit happens every saturday so you can also visit the office uh, nairobi cbd along ronan gala street a building known as rng plaza along Ronan Gala Street. So guys, remember Faraja Settlers Limited, they ensure that your property is our priority. God bless you as you plan to invest in the year 2024. And of course, guys, I'm in Mombasa, courtesy of JM Safaris. I took a trip for work and of course a few days to relax in Nyali and guess who organized it for me. JM Safaris. They organized for me the bookings, transport, and transfers. If you want to go for a holiday, either work related or for relaxation, kindly try them because they are the best when it comes to organizing your holiday trip or your work trip. 
in your destination of your choice. And as for me, I was going in Nyali and in Shanzu. And guess what? JM Safaris organized two houses, one in Nyali, the other one in Shanzu. And uh, they organized my transfer. They have amazing deals and offer for this Valentine. Na siyo lazima kuwana pesa zote at once. Imagine kuna lipa pole pole. So you can start now and be paying pole pole hadis kuya ku travel. You can call the managing director of JM Safaris via her mobile number 0713-977-404. 0713-977-404. JM Safaris, they always ensure that they offer customized, pocket-friendly holiday solutions. Call them today. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's program. My name is Hira Maina Ike Kamuhunji and of course I'm in Mombasa County, a place known as Shanzu. And uh, we are here courtesy of JM Safaris. Uh, so if you'd like to you know, take a vacation, uh, kindly contact the number on your screen so that you can be able to get amazing deal courtesy of JM Safaris. Now, today I have um, somebody from Mombasa County in Shanzu and he will be talking to us uh, about what he has gone through in his work uh, premises. He used to work in Nairobi in a certain hospital, a very, very big uh, prominent hospital in Nairobi and um, have you ever maybe asked yourself why patients don't make it alive in hospital uh, especially in the hospital that they have mortuaries have you ever thought about that and uh, today we'll be talking about the dark side of hospitals in Kenya uh, and uh, with me uh, you will allow me to hide his identity because of uh, his protection because it's a very very sensitive story and uh, we will give him the name Eric uh, because um, of his uh, protection. We will call him Eric, uh, Dr. Eric so that we can be able to get more information about where he used to work from and uh, we get to learn the dark secrets that happened there because I was also shocked to hear this story and without further ado help me welcome him to the program uh, habariako eric mzuri kwa salama kwa salama eh kwa sababu uliko menelezea about story yako naweza nataka tuanze utuambie kazi ya udaktari hasa kwa sababu najua eh kuna watu wenye wamesomea udaktari maybe wakaanzia huko chini we ulianzia kwa hospitali ngapi hii yenye sasa unatuambia kuhusu ni hospitali yako ya kwanza kufanya kazi hapana nilianzia huku huku Mombasa mm-hmm. then baadaye mm-hmm. nika apply Nairobi na nikachukuliwa ah ukachukuliwa yeah. eh now the hospital that we are talking about eh, in uh, Nairobi eh umeniambia ulisema iko na mochari ndani sasa eh uliingia huchia nilianza kazi 2017 2017 mm-hmm. ehe ulipoanza ulianza ulipata chio gani huko nilikuwa daktari daktari mkubwa daktari yeah, daktari okay yeah. uh, so that was way back in 2017 2017 ehe so maybe unaweza tunaanzia tu venye tu uliko umeniambia ulipoingia sasa huko kufanya kazi eh uh, i'm sure in a very normal working environment there is no way unaweza ingia hiyo kwa kazi mpya na ukuwe umeona kuna shida mahali pale mm. maybe you can tell us the day yenyewe sasa ulianza kuona kuna shida okay mimi nilianza kazi 2017 mm. sikugundua kama kuna shida yoyote kwa sababu tulianza nilianza kazi tu normal nikaendelea kama kawaida lakini kuna vitu vikubwa vitatokea kama kawaida kwenye hospitali kuna vitu vingi vinatokea. Sikugundua kama kuna shida yoyote. Lakini baada ya miaka kadhaa nilikuwa mmeka mingapi? Nilifanya kazi kama miaka miaka mitatu hivi. Ambayo ilikuwa ukiada kutokuja 2020. Ndio kulikuja mgonjwa ambaye alikuwa ni mtoto mdogo. Ali ali admitio katika hospitali na mimi ndo nikawa nikawa daktari wake. So 
kulingana na vipimo ambavyo nilifanya katika mtoto ilikuwa ni ugonjwa ambao si mkubwa vile ambao unaweza tibika kwa haraka ilikuwa yasumbuliwa na kifua baada ya kumpima nikamwandikia nikaandika madawa ambayo natakana apatiwe nikapeana list ya madawa ikapelekwa ikapelekwa pharmacy madawa akakuja nika nikamtibu mtoto akawa amelazwa katika hall nikaendelea kumfuatilia ikiwa bado ana ana recover lakini baada ya muda aliletwa kama leo eh, ba, baada ya masaa kadhaa hivi within 24 hours ikawa mtoto bala apungue makali katika ile ugonjwa wake ikawa ugonjwa unazidi unaona sasa kashanga kwa nafsi shida gani maana kama dani nimepata kulingana vile vipimo vimeendelezea so ikabidi tena nikaanza kumtibu tena kwa mara ya pili ili niendelee kumfuatilia zaidi nikarudi ofisini nikawa nimetulia na endelea kumngoja yeye kama ata recover badala lakini baada ya muda tena nikaitwa ghafla nikasemekana mtoto amezidiwa zaidi kufika pale kile kumtibu tibu kidogo kidogo mtoto akaaga Mhm. Na mtoto aliaga dunia. Mm -hmm. Kitu ambacho kilinishtua sana. Mm -hmm. Kwa sababu sio kawaida mgonjwa kuja na huo ugonjwa alafu afe ghafla kama hivyo. So wako it uh, haiku ada. Ya yeah, siku siku leo ni kitu gani ambacho imesababisha yeye kufa? Unaona. Kwa sababu kama vile nilivyokuambia huo ugonjwa sio ugonjwa ambao unaweza sema mgonjwa aliyetoka kama saa hii within hours ama yeah. day mm. mtoto amekufa so siku ileo hiyo situation mm. yeah. okay kwa hivyo unaweza sema uh, ndio ujue kuna shida ni ku, kwa sababu we huyo mtoto yeah ni huyo mtoto kwa sababu vitu vingi viko vyatokea mm. kama hivyo mgonjwa anazaletwa sasa hivi na ukiangalia ugonjwa wake ambao ameletwa nao sio ugonjwa ambao anaza kufa within hours ama a day ama two days mgonjwa ambao anaza tibia within those hours. So ndio baada ya mtoto kwa sababu ilikuwa ni mtoto mdogo. Ndio mm -hmm. ilini affect akili zaidi. Unaona? Mm -hmm. Nikashtuka nikasema ah no. Hii sio kitu ambayo inafai happen. Mhm. Mm so ki. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So hapo sasa ndio ulichukua ulikuwa umeniambia after huyo mtoto kwa sababu uliona ni mtoto hiyo kitu ikafanya ufikirie sana kuna E, ile hatu yenye ulichukua sasa kujaribu kuchunguza. Maybe unaweza tuambia uliweza kuchunguza kivipi? Kicho kwanza ambacho kilimgonga kwenye akili ni kwamba haya madawa. Unajua yale madawa ambayo madaktari wanatumia sana sana ya kuna 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 ya kuna toxins ambazo zikiwa too much maybe inaza affect your mgonjwa. So nikasema acha nifuatilie madawa hiyo list nilipata nas nas ndo kanileta madawa so nikaenda kumuuliza nas ama madawa ulipatikana nani ili niweze kujua kama kweli ni madawa sahi ama labda vipi niweze kuyachunguza nika direct kwa mtu ambaye yuko ni pharmacy kwenda pale kumuuliza ule ule, ule jamaa ambaye yuko pale hakutaka kuniambia hiki kitu aliniambia nini yeye eh, alichukua ile list akaipeana akapata madawa akapatia nas nas akanileta mimi same process ambayo inafanyika every day every time. Mm. So nikasema na. Kwa nini yani inatokea kivi? So nika nika, nika communicate na rafiki yangu ambaye anafanya homology. Nikasema huyu mtoto hebu mfanyie post mortem then unipatie results. Nijue kitu gani ambacho kimemwa exactly. Maana kesezi kuwashua kama ni ugonjwa ambao alikuja nao hapa. So ule jamaa pale pale kwa mom akafanya hiyo post mortem then baadaye kidogo akaniita akaniambia results ndio hizi hapa so inaonesha huo mtoto ule ugonjwa mbali iletwa nao sio huo ambao umemuua ni kama alipatiwa dawa ambayo iko na too much toxins ambayo mm -hmm. so kawaida unaona so kawaida katika hizo dawa kwa na too much toxins sio nikabidi swali kwa nini zidawa zinakuwa na hiyo 
na hiyo too much toxins na wakati zinafaa kuwa balanced ambazo zinaweza kusaidia wagonjwa. Unajua kuna wagonjwa wengine wanakuja wanapatiwa same same medicines lakini wana recover mm. na wanarudi majumbani na wanakuwa sawa. Lakini sasa kulingana na hicho kifo cha mtoto mimi ni nikoroga akili sana. Ika ni kula kila atakao nikaenda nyumbani na nitatiza kweli. Ndio ikabidi nikaifuatilizia hiyo case. So baada huyo jamaa wangu Mungu kunielezea hizo results. Ikabidi tena nikarudi tena kwa college ya pharmacy. Mm. Lakini sasa kumdadisi dadisi kidogo aka hakutaka kuwa open na mimi. Umeona? So mimi kasema haina shida. Haina shida. Nikarudi zangu ofisini. Nikaenda ndani na shughuli zangu lakini huku bado akili na nikula kusu kufuatilia hiyo hiyo mm. issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So kwa hivyo hakuna jambo ambalo uliweza kufanya sasa kusaidia ama kuweza kujua ni nini inaendelea. Ah baadaye nilifikiria ngasema acha acha tena nirudi kwa ule jamaa wa farmers maana yeye ndo alitoa na dawa. Mm -hmm. Nikasema bila yeye hey, ilikuwa tu naongea naye lakini alikuwa so so mtu wa karibu vile. Nikasema labda nikimleta karibu al kama rafiki yangu atakuwa open na mimi. So ikabidi nikajenga urafiki na yule jamaa wa farmers nikamwelezea kusu issue issue tu za maisha mm. ikawa tuna tunaongea sana kama vile sio kama vile zamani vile tulikuwa tunaongea nikawa nasikizana naye vizuri nini sasa ikabidi tena nikarudi tena kumuuliza kusu hizo hizo dawa hiyo processing ya madawa ni vipi na piano vipi vipo akaniambia mimi si ruhusiwi kuelezea zaidi hapa mali ambapo nafanya umeona hii step ambayo niko ndo nafaa tu mimi napewa madawa na kupatia na mpatia nas anapelekea daktari hivyo tu bas nikajaribu kumuuliza nani anakupatia madawa ama dada madawa yanaingia ingiaje hapo hospitali yanakuja vipi yeye akanaelezea kwamba hizi dawa zinakuja kwa wengi umeona so eti inakuja dawa box moja ama mbili ni zinakuja nyingi so wezi jua dawa gani mbaya dawa gani nzuri umeona maana zishapimwa tayari zinaletwa hospitali hasa mimi nafanya tu kupatiwa yana daktari hivyo tu nilielezea. Mhm. Mm okay, ulikuwa umeniambia pia after that uliweza kukuwa very you know cautious na kuanza kuangalia maybe other incidences ambazo zimeweza kuwa zikifanyika pale mm -hmm. eh, after hiyo incident ya huyo mtoto. Yeah. Ni maybe unaweza tuelezea ni incident kama gani zingine uliona zimehape uko na hapa na hii sio normal. Okay. So bado rubi shtangu hapo hapo wa, wa farmers alipokata kwa open na mimi so nikashindwa kama huu hata naelezea zaidi nitaezaje kufuatilia madawa so ibaki tu na baki tu hiyo kitu kwenye akili yangu nikaendelea tu na shughuli zangu za kawaida lakini baada ya muda kidogo kulikuja mama ambaye iko na iko na pressure blood pressure alikuja kadimitiwa lakini sasa asikupatiwa mimi daktari mimi alikuja daktari mwanzangu ikawa yeye ndo anamshughulikia So kulingana na hiyo nilifuatilia baadaye lakini nikasema maana kisaita kwa kila mgonjwa akija akija na shida fulani ambayo ni ndogo nita make sure ninafuatilia nione kama atarikafa vizuri ama itatokea same same thing ambayo ile mtoke ile mtoto so ikabidi nikachukua ile file ile mgonjwa ile mama nikaipitilia nikaipitilia kuangalia hivi pressure yake ndio ilikuwa imepanda ilikuwa juu ilikuwa kama ilikuwa 150 so nikasema hiyo 150 obvious inazatibiwa na ikashuka ikashuka So mimi sikwenda pale kumtibu ikawa daktari yule mwanzangu anaendelea kutibu. Lakini baada ya muda ngani akaelezea kwamba ule 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 mama pressure yake imepanda baada ya, ku, ya kugongwa dawa. So nikajiuliza swali. Nikabidi nikamfuatia ule nurse ambaye ampelekea madawa ule daktari. Akaniambia amempelekea dawa ambazo zinahitajika zile zile. Ah, Sami kasema hapana. Nikabidi nikampa approach ule daktari tuongee naye tuka switch nikamwambia acha mimi ni take over huu ungonjo. So nikasema nini? Niliboruhusiwa nikasema no. Sitachukua hizi dawa. Yaani nitachukua tu pale, lakini nitachukua dawa nyingine kutoka nje, ni kitu ambacho kiruhusiwi katika hospitali lakini nikabidi ngana nikanunua dawa nyingine nje. Ili nije kumdunga yule mama nione kama itaria same same na zile dawa ambazo ziko pale. So nilikuja na ile dawa, nikamtibu yule mama, nikamwacha pale kwa forward lakini after some hours nikamboa mgonjwa 
ameamuka maana alikuwa ameenda kwa koma alikuwa like hayuko tena niko pale tu lakini hailewi so baadaye nikamwambia mgonjwa amerecover na ameamuka kuna pale ni kweli nikampima nika nikaona pressure yake imeshuka vizuri iko normal so mimi nikamwacha hapo nikamwambia nas huu mgonjwa mwache mtivi alikave in case utatoke anything uniite mimi ndiye nimtibu tena nikamwambia mtu yote asimdunge dawa tena isipokuwa mimi mwenyewe nasi akanambia sawa so mimi nikaendelea tena ofisini nikaendelea na shughuli zangu lakini baadaye tena ule nasi akaniita akaniambia ule mgonjwa ule mama amezidiwa tena kufika pale nikaamba ule nasi anikauliza kuna mtu amekuja hapa ndani daktari yote akamdunga dawa akaniambia ndiyo kuna daktari amekuja akamdunga dawa so mimi nikawa ile kwa nini maana mimi nilikwambia mtu yote asimdunge dawa huyu huyu mama umeona isipokuwa mimi mwenyewe kwani kulitokea nini mpaka mkamtoa ile daktari akaja akamdunga dawa akasema no alikuja kwa sababu mgonjwa kwa anza kurecover ili kumdunga dawa atakave vizuri so akamdunga zile zile dawa ambazo mimi mwenyewe nazishuku so dawa nzuri so mgonjwa akarudi tena kwa kwenye koma like so nikasema hapana ikabidi nikam approach ule daktari nikamuuliza hizi dawa kwa nini yani umeenda kumdunga hizi dawa na hizi dawa nikambe wewe oh, unazionaje nikamuuliza tu yeye wewe oh, unazionaje hizi dawa maana yake sioni kama zina work vile zinatakikana so ule daktari ninaangalia akaniambia brother fanya kazi ambayo umekuleta hapa hizo vitu zingine achia wenyewe ndio ninaambia hivyo hakutaka tena kuongea na mimi kuhusu hiyo issue ilivotoka pale kwa yule daktari baada ya kukata hiyo story kuelezea kwamba nifate issue zangu ambazo nimefata pale mimi nikasema no acha nirudi kule mstari wangu ambao iko pharmacy niweze tena kum kumdadisi zaidi nijue zaidi lakini baada ya kutoka nikasikia ripoti kwamba ule mama mm -hmm. ameaga tena ana siku yani same same thing ambayo imetokea kwa ule mtoto ndio kama imetokea kwa umama maana akukaa sana pale hospitali na sio kitu cha kawaida ikazidi tena kunikoroga akili so ikabidi tena nikarudi pale pale kwa ule koleji ya mwangu wa pharmacy kumuuliza yeye kanambia same thing kwamba yeye anafanya kuchukua list ambayo anapewa na nurse then anampatia mkubwa wa pharmacy mkubwa wa pharmacy ndio anatoa hizo dawa so mimi kamuuliza kwani hizi dawa zinakuja tofauti tofauti. Akaniambia mimi hiyo story, hiyo mimi hiyo story mimi sijui. Labda ukamuuliza huyu mkubwa wa pharmacy. So mimi katoka pale kabidi nikamfesi yule mkubwa wa pharmacy kumuuliza hilo swali. Kama hizi dawa zinakuja tofauti tofauti ziko kando kando ama ni vipi. So ule 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 mkubwa wa pharmacy yeye akataka kunieleza mambo mengi. Yeye alinambia hizo dawa unavyozona zinapokuja ndio zinakuja tu hivyo. Kwa hivyo wewe kama daktari fanya kazi yako wewe kama daktari mimi mtu wa dawa niache nifanye kazi yangu kama kama mtu wa kwa kama mtu wa pharmacy. Maana pia mimi mwenyewe sijui sijiulizi maswali huko juu. Maana kuna mimi hapa hivi kuna mkubwa wangu ambaye yuko juu ambaye pia anajua hizo information. Lakini mimi wasiulizi maswali mengi nafanya kazi yangu. So mimi nikatoka. Nikabidi sasa ile mama akapelekwa akapele kwa mocha kufanya post mortem. Nikabidi nikamfuata ule mtu yangu. Nikamwambia kuna wewe na kuna ule jamaa wa farmers nataka tukutane lakini sio hapa ndani. Tukutane nje tukaongee kuhusu issue. Uzuri ni watu wangu wanapatana nao wakakubali. Tukakutana mahali. Sasa nikawaelezea. Nikawaelezea zaidi vile nashuku kitu gani kinaendelea kuhusu hizo dawa ni So kitu ambacho walikubali walisema kwamba sawa tutakusaidia lakini sisi hatutahusika majina yetu katika hizo katika hiyo uchunguzi wako. Wewe utachunguza kivi yako lakini sisi hatutakuwa. Sasa ikabidi nikarudi tena hospitali ikabidi katika kupata zile dawa ma kule jamani kataka kuzitoa kwa sababu kuna venye zinakuwa na kwa registered pale jinsi gani dawa zimetoka na anamechukua mtu kama hivyo. So ikabidi nika fake, nika fake list ya mgonjwa, nikaenda nika apply hizo dawa nikapewa. 
sasa ni yangu kwangu kuchukua zile dawa kwenda kuzipima nje dawa hizi ni dawa zile tu bado za kama za pressure ama eh hizo za pressure na zile ambazo nikamtumia ule mtoto pia zote nikazichukua nikasema acha hizi dawa nikazipime nijue zina shida gani sawa nikafanikiwa kupata hizo dawa nikatoka nazo nikaenda nikazipima nikapata hizo results na nikuniongea zile zile results ni kweli kile kitu ambacho kwa nashuku kwamba hizi dawa zinakuja na zikona too much of toxins zikona too much of toxins so nikasema ah, no wacha nifuatilie ile bit yangu pharmacy nimuelezee umeona labda yeye anaweza kuwa open zaidi kitu ambacho anajua zaidi na hivyo ndio kumuonesha zile results yeye kaniambia bro mimi sijui umeona mimi sijui chochote mimi nafanya kuchukua hizi dawa na kupatia tu kama daktari wewe ah, sasa nikasema sawa Ikabidi nikarudi tena kwa ule best yangu wa, wa Mog nikamwambia nini hebu nifanye post hiyo post matoa yao mama unipate results na vile nilikuwa tayari na zile results za ule mtoto nianze kuifuatilia hii kesi mwenyewe kwa sababu kila mmoja anaifuata hata kikuhusishwa na hiyo kesi ule best yangu wa Mog akakubali akasema sawa akanipatia results lakini hakuhusisha jina lake katika zile results so ni yangu ikawa nini mimi sasa acha nichunguze hii kesi kivi yangu kwa sababu ama bishti yangu wote wamekataa wana mimi. Ikabidi sasa mimi kitu ambacho sitaki kwamba nilichukua nilisema acha ni face yao kubwa wakubwa wa madaktari ni waelezee au usishi madisi ya hii kesi iweze kuchunguzwa zaidi kwa sababu sio kitu cha kawaida ama kitu ambacho sio kizuri kufanya binadamu mwenzako. Maana yake yeye anakuja hospitali kuamini hiyo hospitali aweze kutibiwa aweze kukona alafu akija kumbe ndo anakuja kufesi kifo chake ule bishti yangu pale kwa katika mmoja ile baada ya kuwahusisha ile kuongea nao wale wawili baadaye alinivuta kando akaniambia hiyo kesi ambayo unafuatilizia sio kesi ambayo iko hapa peke yake kuna kesi nyingine ambayo mi mwenyewe pia ina nyuma akili lakini naogopa kufuatilizia kuna watu pale wakiletwa katika motor nikawafanyia nikawa post mortem baadaye nagundua kwamba body parts zao zimechukuliwa. So ndio bishtangu ni design for kana ile sana tunakorogeka zaidi. So nikawa like kwa nini hii hospitali inafanya hivyo kusudi ili iweze kupata hizo body parts ama ni kitu gani ambacho kinachangia zaidi. So nikawa na connect hizo vitu lakini hazi has add up yani zinakataa tu hivyo. Ningasema acha nihusisha wao kwa madaktari maybe wanaweza kuhusisha ma DCI au kaja wakachunguza zaidi maybe wao hizo steps na hizo statements ambazo nilikuwa nazo na hizo results ambazo nilikuwa nazo maybe wanazaziunganisha na wakapata story ambayo ina flow so ile nilipochukua ile step ya kwenda kwa katika kufesa wale wakubwa na daktari sasa niko kwa nyumbani nikajiuliza lakini sasa kuna 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 vitu vinatokea sana pale like vifo vinatokea sana katika ile hospitali na sana sana natokea mwezi wa mwezi wa nane paka mwezi wa pili mwezi wa mwezi wa nne hapo umeona na ukienda uki sasa ikabidi nikafanya nini nikarudi tena hospitali kwenda kuangalia zile files za vifo vile vina ndio nikagundua hiyo miezi kwamba August to, to April sana sana kuna kuna watu wanakufa wengi katika hospitali na nikiangalia hizo 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 amini hao magonjwa ambao wanakufa wanakufa nayo sio magonjwa ambayo yako serious vile ambayo tu mtu anaza face death within hours of my day kitu ambacho mtu anazatibiwa na kapona na kawa vizuri na nikipiga sasa nivongalia zile files wazapata kwa mwezi kuna watu wanakufa kama watu watu 50 50 to 60 hapo within a month nikashtuka sana lakini kitu ambacho si kuwahi fikiria ni kama kutatokea vitu kama hizo katika hospitali ambao kila mtu anaiamini anakuja ile atibio then anakuja kufesi kifomona so ndo nikasema no ndio kanipatia motisha zaidi ya kwenda mbele so kesho yake asubuhi mimi nikaamka nikasema acha nichukue hizi results na kila kitu ambacho nilikuwa nacho evidence yote nikasema acha niende nika face hawa hawa makubwa daktari so nikao niko kwenye barabara hii aitwaje kwenye uru eh uru uruaye uruaye So nilikuwa niko kwenye hii barabara ya Uhuru Highway. Lakini kuchunguza kwa gari langu lina mafuta. So nika nikaingia shell hapo ili kujaza mafuta. Mm. Sasa nilipokuwa najaza mafuta. 
baada ya kaka dako kuja gari lingine mbio sana kwa mbele yangu <laughs> nishtuka sana maki siku hiyo nikina nani umeona sio kuangalia vizuri jamaa akatoka mbio ndani ya gari alikuwa amevaa mask wakanichukua wakanizenda na gari wakaenda na mimi <laughs> So at that time sikujua nani ambaye amefanya hivi, umeona ama sikujua kwa nini. Ilikuwa tu nimeko kwenye shock like sijui nini na happen. Umeona. Yeah, so nilikorogeka since that time. Maana yake kwa kidnapped then sikuruhusiwa hata kufika katika ile target yangu kwanza kwa kufika katika au kwa daktari. Ya maanisha yani nilijenga tu nikasema hapa kuna mtu hapa katikati ambaye anazuilia hii kitu isibulikane na mtu yote. Sasa baada ya jamaa kunichukua, huwa nilipeleka kwa room. Lakini nilikushtuka mimi niko kwenye room tayari room empty, nimekalishwa tu mahali nimefungwa, niko tu hapo. Na sikujua nani ambaye amefanya hivi. Mhm. And today I bring good news because we are launching uh, Kithi Money, which is a new face. And the way I'm standing right now, as you can see, uh, there are people uh, in my background. And uh, actually where they are, that is where our plot is. Meaning that this plot is touching uh, the Tarmac Road. And this road, as you are seeing it here, it is along, you know, is a, is a, is a bypass. I can see it's a bypass connecting Kidimani town and Machakos. So from Vika to here, it is just uh, around 30 minutes drive. If you would want to own this plot, uh, Kidimani, because this is a new phase that we have launched, all you have to do is book your site visit. As you can see, some of our clients are here so that they can be able to book their own plots. So you can uh, uh, come to our offices or even call our number, which is 0705-525252. Uh, so guys, these plots, they are 50 by 100 piece of plot and they are going for 650,000 Kenya shillings. And of course, you can deposit 50,000 Kenya shillings. And of course, the balance you pay in a very, very flexible payment plan. We have six months uh, payment plan. We have one year payment plan. So we accommodate each and every one of you so that you can be able to own this plot. And remember, this plot, uh, when you buy it, uh, this amount that you are paying 650,000 Kenya shillings is inclusive of your title deed. After you have completed this amount, you get your own title deed within a duration of one month. So guys, I can assure you that this is the best place to invest when it comes to social amenities. We have schools around, we have hospitals, we have a market, we have neighbors. And uh, I can assure you but that uh, as you can see, uh, there's electricity just behind me. So the plot that we're selling, steamer, Econile. Na naweza taka, you know, our cameraman to show us, as you can see there, there is electricity. And this is a plot, this is the land that we are talking about. And uh, this plot, steamer iko hapa, inje kwa ploti. So guys, this is the best place to invest because we are looking at, you know, a place that it has already developed. You can call our number 0705-525252 so that you can book a site visit. And even people in diaspora, I always tell you that uh, you also have a chance to invest in Kithi money. So you can always send somebody, people in diaspora, so that they can come and see what we are talking about. So even people who are around, you can visit our offices in Nairobi CBD along Ronald Gala Street. Uh, fifth floor, room number four. Faraja Settlers Limited, I always tell you that this is a place where we say uh, that your uh, property is our priority. Thank you. God bless you.